Hi there, this is Kevin Benedict, Mobility Analyst and Enterprise Mobility Consultant. And I'm back for part two with Harish Rao. Yes, there we go. And um, we were just having a discussion about lessons learned, additional lessons learned on implementing uh, mobile solutions using SAP as the back end and Afaria and SUP. And I think this is just, this is too good of information, too valuable of information uh, for you to keep to yourself. So um, why don't you share with the audience your personal experience in doing these implementations because these, the things you shared with me are not things you would anticipate necessarily or know about until you've jumped in there. And so this is why it's so important to be working with somebody with experience who's done it before and who's suffered through the consequences but now can share and benefit others through that experience. So um, I'll hand the mic to you and why don't you just share with us that experience. Sure, sure. thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, so what, uh, one of the things that we learned and we learned it the hard way was uh, 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 SUP as a, it's a great platform for development, uh, but you got to be very mindful of all the different components which work with SUP. What version of uh, Windows are you on? What version of, uh, you know, your device platform you're on. So in our particular case, we were developing this app on the iOS platform. And when we started developing, uh, the customers, all the devices were on the 4.0 uh, version. And uh, we had SUP 2.0 running and we developed the application, they had deployed it and they were doing, uh, you know, final testing, final round of testing before go live. And suddenly we started finding that the app stopped working. and. Uh, you know, it's always good if it stops working on all devices, but it was working on some and not working on the other devices. And uh, uh, took us a while to debug what was happening. Is it something that we've developed? Is it something on the platform? It turns out that uh, some of the users had upgraded to 5.0 of uh, iOS, and uh, the SUP platform 2.0 was not fully supporting the 5.0 version. So uh, we have, we had a dilemma there because uh, there were two options. One is tell the users to downgrade back to 4.0, which let me tell you, it's not an easy thing to do on the iOS side. I mean, once you upgrade it, it's very difficult to downgrade back on the devices. The other option was to upgrade the SUP platform to 2.1.2, which would fully support the 5.0 uh, iOS on the devices. And uh, sure enough, I mean, that's the route that we had to take. We, uh, we had not planned for it. We had not budgeted for it in the project. But, uh, you know, we had to upgrade the SUP platform from 2.0 to 2.1.2. And that's when, you know, the app was working fine on all the different devices. So something that uh, we really learned the hard way. Uh, be very mindful of uh, what versions of devices, what versions of back-end software. If your platform says it works only on these versions, trust me, it will only work on those versions. So uh, uh, just something to be really mindful of. Harish, thank you for sharing that. And it's Element 5 Solutions. Is your website element5solutions.com? Uh, e E5SOL.com. Got it. So if you want somebody that's suffered the pain of being an early adopter, but learned from it and knows how to do it even better the second time, um, call Element 5 Solutions. Thank you very much.